So translate something means that we are physically moving it from its location. We're not changing its size, we're not changing its shape, we're just moving it from where it is to a new place. So if we're moving a circle, it's like we're moving the center of that circle to a new location. So to, to figure out these translations and the new equations, what we need to do, we need to identify the center of the original, then we move it however they're describing, and then with that new center, just write the equation. Okay, the radius is not going to change because we're not changing the shape, we're not changing the size, we're just changing the location. So let's look at the last one there on that front page, number 10, because I want to do one that has uh, a translation in both directions. Okay, you can move it in both directions or you can just move it in one direction, horizontally or vertically or both. But let's look at one that has, um, that has both. So let's look at number 10. Uh, X minus 15 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 12 is our original equation. So our original center is 15, 3. Here's where you got to make sure that you're careful about making sure that you change the signs. Okay? So if we move three units left, left and right are x values. So if we are currently at x equals 15 and we move three units to the left, what is our new x coordinate going to be? 12. Okay, if we okay. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Because when you pull it out of the equation, you change the signs. X minus fifteen means you're at positive one. Okay? So if our y coordinate is currently at 3 and we move 3 units down, where are we going to be? 0. So our new equation is x minus 12 squared plus, uh, I don't need parentheses, just y squared is equal to 12. That does not change. The radius squared does not change. We're not changing the shape or the size, we're just changing the location. Um, excuse me. And we're supposed to identify the new, we already identified the new center, so the radius is still the square root of 12, and if we simplify that, that's what, two square roots of three, two square roots of three, not two, two square roots of three, because that's four times three. Square root of four is two, three is not a perfect square, so it stays out there. Okay, so there's the new equation, the new center, and the radius in both cases. All right, so the key here is going to be make sure that you get your signs right when you identify the center. Always, always, always change the signs when you identify the center. If you're moving left and down, you subtract. If you're moving right and up, you add. Okay, negative directions, positive directions. Pretty self-explanatory there. All right. You will notice that those equations don't look very much like any of the equations we've been looking at so far. They are in what we call general form. It's all mixed up. What they've done is they have expanded uh, the x plus 12 squared. They've foiled it out and combined like terms and everything. So looking at that, we can't tell what the center and the radius are. We know that it's a circle because it's got x squared plus y squared but we can't tell what the center and radius are. So we've got to convert it to standard form, which requires us to complete the square. Okay, so that's part of the reason why we hit that so hard earlier in the semester. If you don't remember it, not a big deal. I'm going to go slow and I'm going to go over, okay? But we have to do it twice. We have to do it with both our x variable and our y variable. It's not as hard as it sounds. You just got to, no, it's not. You just got to keep, stop arguing with me. You just got to keep things organized. All right. So the first step is easy. You group your terms together. So we need our x's to be together. x squared plus 26x. Leave yourself a space for the completing the square term. Group your y's together. I'm going to try and keep things color coordinated so you can see where it goes. So y squared minus 16y. Leave yourself another space. And that constant needs to go to the other side. But if we move it to the other side, it's going to become negative 224. <laughs> okay. 
simply so far, right? Uh -huh. All right, now, focus on the x's. Let's complete the square right there. What do we do to complete the square? Yes, 26 divided by 2 is 13, and then we square it. So 13 squared, I believe, is 169. So that goes in the blank space. And remember when we had to add it to the other side, you've got to keep the equation balanced. If you just add 169 over here, you've got to add 169 to the other side so that we haven't actually changed the equation. Yes. Okay, 26 divided by 2 is 13. 13 squared is 169. Okay? Okay? All right, so let's do it with the x's. We divide the negative 16 by 2, we get negative 8, negative 8 squared is 64. That number is always going to be positive. Be careful. If you type negative 8 into your calculator, you've got to put parentheses around it before you square it because that should always be plus 64. <clears throat> and on the right side, when we combine these numbers, it should always be positive. If it is not positive on the right side, something has happened uh, wrong because r squared cannot be a negative number, okay? So let's go ahead and simplify the right side and then we'll deal with the left side. So did you say it's 9? Okay, negative 224 plus 169 plus 64 is indeed 9. All right. Now, all we've got to do to put this in standard form is to factor what we completed the square. But remember, that part's really not that complicated <clears throat> because it's always the number that you squared goes inside the parentheses. So we squared positive 13. For the y's, we squared negative 8. So it's y minus 8 squared. So our new center is negative 13 because we square negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. So our center is negative 13, positive 8, and our radius is 3. Okay? So it's, it's not that bad, guys. It's not that bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. We're going to do something that takes more than two seconds. Wait till you get to college. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do number 12 as well. Okay, let's do number 12. Group your x's together. x squared minus 10x. Leave a space. Group your y's together. y squared minus 22y. Move the constant to the other side, negative 137. Completing the square with the x's. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Squared is positive 25. Add that to both sides. Complete the square for the y's. Negative 22 divided by 2 is negative 11. Negative 11 squared is positive 121. So all of our constants, negative 137 plus 25 plus 121 also gives us 9. That will not always happen, it just happened in these two uh, examples. Okay, factoring, it's always the number we squared. So if as you're doing this, if you want to go ahead and do that part, if that works for you, go ahead and fill that in as you're completing the square. If that's what helps you remember, do it. So we've got x minus 5 squared plus y minus 11 squared is equal to 9. So the center is positive 5, positive 11, and the radius is 3. Again, every time when you square those numbers, it doesn't matter when they're positive, but when they're negative, people tend to mess them up. If you square the negative number, the result is always positive. So you're going to add it to the other 
aside, you should never have a negative uh, result on the right side. Unless you combine everything, it should always end up being positive. R squared can never be negative. You can't square a radius and get a negative number. It's always going to be a positive result. Now, if you get a negative, don't just make it positive. If you get a negative, you got to go back and find your mistake because something went wrong somewhere. Okay? So, your turn. Get back in.